With Daybreak on a new week, Slater and her crew continue to act as a target for TBF Avengers in the waters off Key West, Florida. Prior to departing the Orange State Pier, R.A. Pierce, Seaman Second Class, was transferred off the ship to report for duty at the Casco Bay Receiving Station at Portland, Maine. After exiting the channel and proceeding to the torpedo exercise range, multiple drills were conducted. A man overboard drill started the morning at 0800, and the survivor, Oscar, was brought safely aboard 13 minutes later. A fire, collision, and steering drill followed shortly after, until Slater entered the torpedo range at 0910. She proceeded to sail on courses of 90 degrees true and 270 degrees true as a TBF squadron commenced a simulated attack. This continued into the afternoon when the ship took another hit from an errant torpedo that did not dive properly. It struck around frames 45-46, which is the ice machine room, about one foot below the waterline. This was the same area where a torpedo struck the previous week and flooded the compartments. Slater fell out of formation about 400 yards as damage was assessed. This time, there was no penetration in the hull, but the frame was bent and bulged in. Once the all-clear was given, she returned to the range and more attacks were conducted against the ship. No more hits were recorded this day, and she returned to the Orange State Pier and moored with six lines. Throughout the evening and into the night, many crew members returned from their leave. On the 26th, Slater returned to the torpedo exercise area, but this time carried a passenger. A crew member from the Lapwing class minesweeper, USS Thrush, AM-18, seems to have hitched a ride aboard Slater this morning. The unidentified Yeoman second class was transferred to his ship via motor whaleboat. Once completed, Slater continued to the torpedo exercise area and eight torpedoes were dropped from TBF Avengers. None struck the ship. The ship did briefly secure from general quarters and captain's mass was held for Leonard W. Collins, Seaman First Class. His rating was reduced to Seaman Second Class. Following this, more torpedo runs were made and another struck the ship. This time, the port screw was possibly damaged after it hit around frame 159. Captain Blanc went over the side in the motor whaleboat to inspect the damage, and nothing major was discovered and the exercise continued until Slater returned to port. Arthur J. Lay, Seaman First Class, returned 18 hours and 40 minutes over leave. More torpedo exercises on the 27th, and would you guess it, another errant torpedo hit between frame 120 and 123. No visible damage, however, and it was a shorter than usual day, and Slater returned to Key West at 1337. Wilson W. Moyer, Seaman Second Class, and Vincent O. D. Stazio, Seaman First Class, both returned to the ship after spending nine days at the Key West Naval Hospital. More of Slater's crew also departed for ten days of leave. Slater remained at her moorings for a few days for repairs and replenishment. More captain's mass on the 28th. ALA, seaman first class, lost 10 liberties for being absent over leave, while D.D. Harris, electrician's mate, first class, was also awarded the loss of 10 liberties but for being AWOL. F. D. Giovanni, ship's fitter third class, appeared before deck court for spitting on the deck in a disrespectful manner to Lieutenant T.J. Piper, after he gave him a lawful order. His punishment was confinement to the ship for 20 days and the loss of $12 a month for two months. In the afternoon, G.F. Figueredo, Seaman First Class, was transferred to the hospital for treatment. On the 29th, Slater shifted her berth momentarily to the Coast Guard fuel dock with the assistance of Tug YTM-330. With the smoking lamp out, fuel was taken aboard, and D Donald W. Howard, motor machinist mate third class, was transferred to the hospital for heat stroke. Slater departed the Coast Guard fuel dock the next morning with the tugs YTM-330, YT-231, and YTL-297. 
Lieutenant Rayburn, United States Navy, came aboard to act as pilot to bring Slater to the U.S. Navy Marine Railway at the Naval Operating Base in Key West. She arrived at 0858, and the tugs, along with Lieutenant Rayburn, departed. Slater was then taken out of the water for an inspection. James H. Tumlin, Seaman First Class, was transferred to the Naval Hospital after injuring his knee. A mess table apparently had fallen on him. On the final day of July, Slater started down the Marine Railway and back into the water. At 10.07, no leaks were reported in any of the engineering spaces, rudder tubes, shaft alleys, sea valves, or in the sound room. Once the green light was given, Lieutenant Rayburn returned with tugs to bring Slater to the Orange State Pier. While preparing to moor to the pier, the ship collided with the dock, tearing off 75 feet of the guard belt. Fortunately, no damage was done to the ship. And this must have been quite the embarrassment for Lieutenant Commander Block, for he had been at sea for nearly two decades at this point, and was a highly qualified captain. Once everything calmed down, Lieutenant Rayburn and the tugs departed. D.M. Burton, Fireman Second Class, was added to the sick list. Engine tests of the number 3 and 4 diesels came back satisfactory, and 7,000 gallons of fresh water were taken aboard. Finally, James R. Gibson, coxswain, returned from a three day leave. Thanks for watching another look into Slater's deck logs. Her training in Key West will continue into September, as she acts not only as a target for torpedo planes, but also as a training vessel for students at the local sonar school. Continue tuning in each week as we get closer to her first convoy to England. If you haven't already, subscribe to our channel and follow us on Facebook for daily updates from the museum.